Hello and welcome. Today we are looking at uh, biodiesel production technology. Uh, these are the raw materials for biodiesel. And the, the first column is type of oil and the second column is the species. The first column we have edible vegetable oils where we can have soybean, rapeseed, sunflower, palm, peanut, corn, camelina and canola. Those are the edible vegetable oils. But remember, some of these are also food crops. So it is important for someone to balance so that you do not compete food crops and uh, the cross for, for oil. Then the second uh, row, we have uh, non-edible oils. And the, these are like jatropha and then things like croton megalocarpus and all that. Then there, with the others, we have used co cooking oils so in most restaurants um you can get some cooking oils which are already used in most restaurants instead of disposing them these oils can be used to uh, produce biodiesel so let's look at the biodiesel production process and to date transatarification is the common technology used to convert vegetable oils or animal fats into biodiesel so transesterification is the most common technology and the transesterification can be performed via non-catalytic or catalytic processes so you can perform uh, uh, the transesterification using catal uh, catalyst or without a catalyst and we are being told here catalytic processes involve using homogeneous catalysts, heterogeneous catalysts, or biocatalysts. So you can have any of those. And here we have uh, the pathway of transatarification. You have a uh, homogeneous catalyst, like we've been told. Then you have heterogeneous catalysts, and you have non-catalytic, so where there's no catalyst. And you can see there we have supercritical methanolysis. And the homogeneous catalyst, catalyst, you can see we have alkaline and we also have acidic. And so you can have homogeneous, you can either use alkaline or acidic. And here heterogeneous, may, uh, we have basic or acidic uh, catalyst. Then after transesterification, you usually have separation. So we look at transesterification reaction and separation. Oil preheated to reaction temperature is then added to the alcohol, that is catalyst mixture, and the reaction continues at transesterification conditions. And therefore, to convert a meter cubed of raw oil into biodiesel from about 0.12 up to 0.23 meter cubed of bimethanol can be used. So you have those quantities there which can guide you. The maximum diesel yield is achieved after about 90 minute reaction time at temperature of 60 degrees centigrade and pressure of about 400 kilopascals. So we have those conditions for a 90 minute reaction. We have about it temperature. These are the conditions of 60 degrees Celsius and pressure for about 400 kilopascals. And after transeterification, we have recovery of methanol is required. So you need to, re to recover the methanol used up there, like we have been shown there on bullet two. It is required prior to separation of our diesel and glycerol. Glycerol is one of the byproduct of our biodiesel production. Then multi-stage distillation unit is used to separate methanol from the mixture. Since the density of methanol is very low compared to that of our diesel and glycerol. So let's look at separation. Prior to separation, the mixture is washed with water. So before you separate, you, you wash the mixture with water. Glycerol is denser than biodiesel and settles at the bottom. Glycerol is, um, uh, will settle at the bottom because it's denser than biodiesel uh, at, at the bottom of the reactor, allowing it to be separated. So when it settles, then you can be able to uh, to separate it from biodiesel, but complete separation cannot be achieved. Remember, uh, there is always some um, mixture, a bit of it. You can't remove it 100%. So that's why you are being told complete separation cannot be achieved. 
Bullet, uh, the other bullet says the efficient method for separation of bodies and glycerol is liquid to liquid extraction with four theoretical stages using water. So you can go further and do liquid to liquid extraction uh, through these four theoretical stages using water. The glycerol remains at the bottom stream together with water, methanol, <coughs> sorry, and catalyst. So let's look at the, you've separated, let's see how you can purify biodiesel. It, biodiesel is then purified in a mortised distillation column so as to obtain a biodiesel with purity of more than 99.6% volume to volume. And the use catalyst is later removed. Remember what the use of a catalyst, you never change it. It never changes even after reaction. It is just a matter of making it faster is later removed from glycerol stream in a neutralization reactor by adding 100% pure phosphoric acid into the glycerol. So we are still purifying and the result is glycerol and either um, as you can see the, the acid there and uh, depending on the catalyst. So we remember we had uh, alkaline or acid catalyst. So depending on the one you use, you'll get this potassium or sodium um, acid depending on the catalyst that is used which are then separated by gravity so you can get uh, you can, depending on the catalyst used uh, you can get that after catalyst removal glycerol that with 85 to 90 percent concentration is purified if necessary in a four stage distillation column some of these uh, glycerol is the one which is used for making making uh, soap and so forth or even in cosmetic industry and you see this is the biodiesel cycle you have the you have the crude uh, extraction here if for instance you are using the um, uh, you are using seeds you can see the extraction of the oil here then the crude oil is uh, we have it here then it is refined you have refined vegetable oil then we have our alcohol in this drum and then we have trans esterification starts here and then the byproduct is glycerol you can see here is used in food industry and cosmetic industry so the byproduct so this is a very good uh, process because even the waste which of or the byproduct of which is glycerol is used in the food industry and cosmetic industry then uh, you continue after transterification you have byproduct glycerol then you but the the main product is biodiesel you can see it in this drum here which you can use it on your vehicles and then uh, then there's emission of co2 which is used in photosynthesis you can see the sunshine here photosynthesis is taking place and you have oil crops here like this looks like a sunflower so the whole thing is uh, the whole process is in uh, it's sort, uh, sort of cyclic so we do not have any co2 going to the uh, going to the atmosphere so you find that uh, biodiesel cycle is um, we can say it is sustainable and it is actually uh, some renewable energy so with that i come to the end of today's lesson until next time